What's up, fight fans? This is Kurt DeVille with Counterpunch Boxing News. And of course, I got some new news for you concerning Chris Eubank Jr. Um, he recently, as of last night, took the belt from um, Quinlan Roland, uh, Roland Quinlan, um, from Australia. And it was a pretty good fight. Um, I think that Quinlan, he waited for Chris Eubank, you know, he was waiting for a counter that was never there. Um, I think he wasn't first enough, which he should have took the fight to Chris Eubank Jr. instead of the other way around. Because one thing about you, you know, Chris Eubank, if you're a stationary target, he's just gonna well on you and that's exactly what happened. Um, I am glad that Chris Eubank Jr. did not fight Golovkin last year. I mean, I'm glad that fight didn't take place, simply because I, I knew what the outcome would be, and the outcome would be Golovkin would have just, would have hurt him. He wasn't ready. I don't think he would have been prepared to fight Golovkin. Now, I don't know, you know, um, all the facts, because I don't think no one really knows all the facts about that, but I think maybe, just maybe, that the Eubank team decided to pull out at the last minute, and then all of a sudden you had Brooke fighting Golovkin, but... Um, back to this fight, uh, Eubanks, he did, he did improve. Um, he did work behind his jab more than he normally does. Um, he still has a bad habit of, um, like tucking his chin and just kind of stepping in to get to the inside because that's when he can rip those uppercuts and those left hooks to the head and body. You know, I think his best punch is the uppercut. Um, at 168, despite him fighting a tough guy, because that's one thing, uh, Quillen was tough, man. I mean, that was a tough opponent. And uh, I think that if, you know, I would like to see him in there either with another 168 pound fighter or someone with better skill, because Quinlan was, um, he was more one dimensional. Um, he was a stationary opponent. He didn't take the fight to him. Um, and, you know, he didn't really have a lot to offer Chris Eubank. So it really wasn't a good test for him. It would be, a, you know, it's a, I mean, I'm glad they found someone that they can actually get a belt from, which is the IBO. Um, which you don't really hear too much about the IBO uh, belt. But, um, you know, truth be told, um, I think that Chris Eubank doesn't really have the power that he thinks he has. Um, the uppercut is his best punch. Again, if he's if he intends, which he stated in the post conference, um, he stated that he would fight at 160 and 168, and I would like to see him with someone with better opposition. Really, I really would. Um, I would love to see him against Lemieux or you know someone that that has punching power to really check his chin because I don't really know a lot about Quinlan to you know about his punching power. I mean, he caught. Chris Eubank with some shots, obviously, he had lacerations on his head, upside his face, from some of those punches, you know, and that was from stepping in, you know, and with the shoulder without anything, you know, I mean, he would, he would throw one jab or two, then he would step in and try to throw that right, you know, over the guard, and, you know, and, and there was a lot of holding and hitting, and again, um, the thing that determines a lot of fights is the refereeing. So if he did fight Golovkin, if he did land that Golovkin fight this year, it would depend on how that fight would take place or how that fight would go would be the referee. You know, someone like Tony Weeks, Jay Nady, guys of that nature. Um, those type of guys like that, um, Randall Bailey, they wouldn't allow all that holding and hitting. That would be a no-no. So it would be some points deducted because I've seen a lot of that in this fight. And, and that's one thing that kind of, you know, rose my suspicion, uh, you know, on how it's refereed. Um, I don't think the fight should have been stopped in the 10th. It could have been stopped earlier, definitely in the 9th, because he was taking a lot of shots, a lot of unanswered shots. And, uh, you know, and I know of the accumulation, you know, that uh, Quinlan took. By the 10th, it was stopped. So I get it. I mean, um, but I mean, it was a good demonstration by Chris Eubank. I mean, the guy is cocky as hell. That's a cocky guy. Um, what else about him? Um, but he hasn't improved. He has improved. 
Uh, I think the layoff helped him a lot. You know, I know he had an injury. Um, but uh, I'm glad, again, I'm glad he did not fight Golovkin. Because, I mean, because Golovkin would have probably walked through those punches. And I know a lot of those punches that he threw last night were arm punches. You know, I mean, except the uppercuts. He did put some body behind it. Um you know, and uh, he he does the showboat, and I guess that's the classic trademark stuff that, uh, you know, he's implementing. He's always been that way. I mean, look who his father is, right? I mean, he's a charismatic guy with a lot of pride, so he has a bank full of it, actually. Um, but I would love to see him with some, you know, with somebody that can thump and um, and with, with boxing ability, you know. So uh, he's calling out a lot of guys. He calls out everybody, of course, so he's doing the regular things to keep his name there. So, I mean, you just got to take your hat off to him and see what he does from here. Um, I would love to see him fight Laura if Laura goes up because I don't think I don't see him fighting Billy Joe. I don't think Billy Joe would give Chris Eubank Jr. a rematch at this point because he's a belt holder. And then, you know, he's up for Canelo or the winner of Canelo and Chavez or Golovkin because Golovkin's coming after it. So I don't see uh, Billy Joe Saunders fighting Chris Eubank Jr. Maybe a year from now. You know, when they both lost again or something like that, you know, on down the line, but not now. But Chris Eubank Jr., I can see him fighting someone like uh, Bondu. Well, not Bondu Jack, but um, James DeGaulle. That would be a good fight because they have beef. You know, that British beef, right? I would like to see that fight because they're both active fighters. They throw a lot of punches and the styles would be very exciting. I would love to see him fight Golovkin now. I mean, this year. Uh, that would be an, also an exciting fight because of the way Chris Eubank Jr. delivers punches, you know, and, um, you know, that would be a good fight. I see it fighting, you know, fought on the inside. But again, if he tries that holding and hitting, you know, that would be a no, no. Uh, it depends on the referee, though. Um, but I liked his performance. I dug it. Um, I don't see him, you know, I, he, he has room to improve, but he has improved. So. You know, you you know, I give credit when credit's due. He has improved a lot since the Billy Joe Saunders fight, because this is a def definitely a, a different fighter from the Billy Joe Saunders fight. I mean, he does have some of the same habits, but he just doesn't do them as much. Um, again, Quinlan is no uh, Billy Joe Saunders, you know. But hey, Billy Joe Saunders is not Billy Joe Saunders, you know, um, according to his last fight. If you looked at his last performance, so. Um, but we just really have to see what Chris Eubank Jr. and the you know and the Eubank team they what they decide to do at this point. But yeah, keep them coming, um, fight better opposition, and um, we'll so we'll soon see. But anyway, this is Kurt Deville with Counterpunch Boxing News, and I'm just wrapping it up. You've guys been counterpunched. Peace.